welcome back. Nice to see everyone again. We are coming to the last video of topic 4.2, where this is the second part. We we'll still talk about stoichiometry, but we are focused on limiting reactant, actual yield, theoretical yield, and also percentage yield. Don't worry, we will look into what they are before we will do some calculation regarding limiting reactant and percentage yield. So, what is actually limiting reactant? Like the word say, it limits. So, what does it limit? Limiting reactant is the reactant that will be completely reacted or consumed. In the other words, the reactant will finish after the reaction. And it will determine the amount of product form. So product will determine or limit by the limiting reactant. So the limiting reactant will finish in a reaction. And also the limiting reactant will determine how much product you are forming. For example, if I have 5 eggs and also 1 kg of flour to produce 1 cake. That is my recipe. What happens if I have 10 eggs and also 1 kg of flour? Based on the recipe above, how many cake do I have? I will still have 1 cake. Why do I still form only 1 cake even though I have extra eggs? Because the flour is only 1 kg. So the flour right now is your limiting reactant. And this limiting reactant will finish after the reaction and also it will determine the product. And what is this 10 eggs? The 10 eggs will have extra that we can name the egg as a excess reactant over here. So what is actually excess reactant? Excess reactant did not use up in the reaction. In the other words, you will have leftover or remaining in the reactant. Like the example that we discussed just now, when I have 5 egg plus 1 kg of flour, I produce 1 cake. So, when I have 10 eggs and also 1 kg of flour, I still produce 1 cake. Why? Because this is your limiting reactant. How about the eggs? The eggs will be your excess. This will be your excess. And it did not finish after the reaction. And it had left over after the reaction finished. And we will have left over 5 eggs. And that is what I mean by excess reactant. You have left over after the reaction. And what about theoretical yield? Theoretical yield, like the word say, is based on the theory. What theory we are talking about? So theoretical yield is the maximum product that can be obtained from a stoichiometry. If you remember from your previous video, stoichiometry must be in number of mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. So theory that we are talking about, the theoretical yield is something that you calculate from the balanced chemical equation. And that is what I mean by theoretical yield. How about actual yield? Actual yield is the amount obtained from the experiment. So actual yield is actually when you are doing it in your lab and the result that you obtain from your experiment. So that is actually your actual yield. And it will usually be less than the theoretical yield. And when you combine two of them, you will have the formula of percentage yield. Percentage yield will be the actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. Bear that in mind, actual yield is the lab result or the experimental result that you obtain from your lab. And your theoretical yield is the one that you calculate from your balance equation. And that is what we mean by percentage yield. Don't worry, you will understand this better when you go into examples. So on the screen, 
I have 2.8 gram of nitrogen gas. I have 2.8 gram of nitrogen gas. It's reacting with 0 0.95 gram of hydrogen gas. In the question, we are looking for the limiting reactant. The mass of ammonia form, where the ammonia over here obviously is your product. Calculate the percentage yield when the actual yield given is 1.98 gram. So we know that the actual yield is your experimental or your lab results. Let's go into the first question. How to determine the limiting reactant? So from the question, we know that we have mass of nitrogen gas given is 2.8 gram. And also we know that we have the mass of hydrogen gas given is 0 0.95 gram. And to find the limiting reactant, we look into the stoichiometry of nitrogen and hydrogen gas in the equation. And from the equation, we know that one mole of nitrogen gas will react with three mole of hydrogen gas. And from our previous lesson, we know that stoichiometry must be done in mole ratio. Therefore, we need to change the mass of nitrogen gas given into number of mole of nitrogen gas and also the mass of hydrogen gas given into number of mole of hydrogen gas. And since we have the mass and we need to find the number of mole, so we need to work out the molar mass. So molar mass of nitrogen gas will be 28 gram per mole. Molar mass of hydrogen gas will be 2 gram per mole. And find the number of mole, we know that 1 mole of nitrogen gas will be producing 28 gram. And right now, I only have 2.8 gram of nitrogen gas. So how many mole of nitrogen gas is there? Number of mole of nitrogen gas, when you work out the ratio, will be 0 0.1 mole. Well, 1 mole of hydrogen gas is equals to 2 gram per mole. And if I have only 0 0.95 gram of hydrogen gas, how many mole of hydrogen gas is that? So the number of mole of hydrogen gas is 0 0.475 mole. And both of this is the number of mole given in the question. You have that much of nitrogen gas and you have that much of hydrogen gas. The question asking for limiting reactant. So we need to figure out which one finish first. And how do we do? We are going to do stoichiometry based on the equation. From the equation, one mole of nitrogen gas will react with three mole of hydrogen gas. And you can pick anyone to become the control. Let's say I use nitrogen gas as the control. So if I have only 0 0.1 mole of nitrogen gas, how many mole of hydrogen gas do I need? If you have one mole, you will need three mole of hydrogen gas. What happens if you only have 0 0.1 mole of nitrogen gas? How many mole of hydrogen gas is needed? Solve the ratio. You will find out the number of mole of hydrogen gas needed is 0 0.3 mole. And that is the number of mole hydrogen gas needed. And then you can compare the needed and the given of hydrogen gas. The number of mole of hydrogen gas given is 0 0.475 mole, which is more than the number of mole of hydrogen gas needed because the needed is only 0 0.3 mole. So what is mean by this statement is you have 0 0.475, you only need 0 0.3. You have more than what you need. 
Therefore, your hydrogen gas will automatically become excess reactant. Since you only have two reactant, when the hydrogen gas is excess, your nitrogen gas is automatically limiting reactant. So what is this calculation about? First and foremost, everything that given in the question is given. You have that much. And then you do a mole ratio calculation based on the stoichiometry of your balance equation. You know that one mole of nitrogen gas will need to react with three mole of hydrogen gas. You pick anyone to become your control. If you have 0.1 mole of nitrogen gas only, how many mole of hydrogen gas is needed? You need 0.3 mole, but you have 0.475 mole. So you have more than what you need. Therefore, hydrogen gas is excess. Nitrogen gas automatically is limiting reactant. A bit of tips for you. When the number of mole given is more than the number of mole needed. You have more than what you need. Therefore, it's an excess reactant. Vice versa, if the number of mole given is less than the number of mole needed, so it will become a limiting reactant because you don't have enough. This is extremely important. Make sure you understand this. Next question, we need to calculate the mass of ammonia form. And we know that the ammonia is a product over here. And we know that who determine the product? Limiting reactant will determine the product. So the amount of product will depend on the limiting reactant. And who is your limiting reactant? From the question A just now, your limiting reactant is your nitrogen gas. So how can we work out the amount of product form? We will be using the limiting reactant stoichiometry compared with the product. So your limiting reactant is nitrogen, one mole. Ammonia will be produced, two mole. From the equation, one mole of nitrogen gas will produce two mole of ammonia but i don't have one mole of nitrogen gas we only have 0 0.1 mole of nitrogen gas given and 0 0.1 mole of nitrogen gas will produce how many mole of ammonia number of mole of ammonia when you work out the mole ratio will be 0 0.2 mole of ammonia the question asking for mass you only have the number of mole so you work out the molar mass of ammonia which is 14 plus three times of hydrogen so the molar mass of ammonia is 17 gram per mole and you know that that is the mass of ammonia when is one mole one mole of ammonia is 17 gram and right now you have 0 0.2 mole of Ammonia, how many gram is that equal to? So mass of ammonia that can be produced is 3.4 gram. And since this mass is calculated from the stoichiometry of the equation, therefore this is what we call theoretical yield because you are calculating it from the equation. So that is your theoretical yield. And we are going to use this theoretical yield to answer the next question. Where the question asking for the percentage yield if the actual yield of the ammonia is 1.98 gram only. We know that actual yield is the one that you are doing in the lab during your experiment. You obtain only 1.98 gram. And from the previous question, we know that the theoretical yield calculated is 3.4 gram of ammonia. And how to work out the percentage yield? The formula of percentage yield is 
equals to the actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. So the actual yield is 1.98 gram. The theoretical yield is 3.4 gram times 100. Therefore, the percentage yield is 58.24% and that is your percentage yield. Which means, when you are doing it in the lab, the yield that you obtain in the lab is only 58.24% from the theoretical yield. And by now, I hope you understand what is actually your limiting reactant, what is actually the theoretical yield, actual yield, and the percentage yield. That's it for this video, and I will see you again in the next topic. Thank you for watching. Music